My name is Jackson Fox, and this video is intended to give you a brief introduction to MATLAB. Uh, really, uh, I'm using this for my Stats 220 students, which is an introduction, introduction to engineering statistics. And we're going to cover a few different things in the video. One of those is setting up the working directory. Uh, we're also going to look at creating a new live script. And then we'll talk about bringing in data in the form of a vector, a matrix, and then also importing a table. And we're going to use a CSV file when we import the table. And then we'll also talk about converting that table to a matrix because some operations you can't use a table for and we have to convert it to a matrix. And then we'll cover some basic statistical operations as well. And at the very end, I'll show you how to save your live script as a MLX file and then also as a PDF. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to set our working directory. So if you click on the folder over here, you can point it to where you want to set up your working directory. And then you'll just hit select folder once you have the folder that you want to use. And then once you set the working directory, all of the files within that folder, folder will show up over here on the left side in, in terms of the current folder. And it makes it easier for accessing that data. The next thing that we want to do is we want to start a new live script. To do that, you're going to go over here to this button that says new live script and just hit the button. It'll show up and it has um, the way that the, the, the panels are set up. It'll have the code over here that you're typing in and then the output on the right. I personally prefer to have the code and the output in line rather than side by side. So I'm going to click this middle button right here and it'll give me a bigger screen to work with and it'll also show the output down below. And now we have our, our workspace set up. Uh, just so you, you're aware, this lower left-hand corner in the workspace down here, this is showing the, the things that we assign a name to. So let's go ahead and get started and see how we do this. When we enter comments, we're always going to use a percent sign first. I'm just going to call this Introduction to MATLAB. And then we're going to start off with a, a vector. So I'll put a comment in here so we know that we're starting off looking at a vector. Now to type in a vector, I'm going to give it a, a name. I'm just going to call it SSM. And that, that's an abbreviation for suspended solid material from a, a problem in our text. And when we enter a vector, we're going to use brackets and we're going to separate the values by a comma. Once we have the data typed in correctly in, this, uh, in these brackets, we can go ahead and hit Run. And then that'll show us the output of the vector. It's saying it's a 1 by 6 vector named SSM. We can perform some basic operations with this. So for example, the, the mean for this, I'm going to call it SSM mean. And then the function for this is just the mean function. And we'll use parentheses. And most of the time, it'll automatically go to autocomplete. So if we assign a name to something, it'll be looking down here for the names of those items. So you see that's the first thing that comes up. So I'm going to uh, just hit tab to autocomplete that. And then I'll run this code, and that gives us the mean of those values. Similarly, we could do the standard deviation. So I'm going to say SSM, and then I'm going to call it SD. And I'm going to say that's equal to STD, which is the standard deviation function. And this time, we're actually going to have to type in SSM because we have something else that begins similar to that. So we'll run this code, and that gives the standard deviation. So we can perform some basic statistical operations on a vector. The next thing I want to show you how to do is a matrix. And we're going to give the, the matrix a name, which is going to be tip type. And when we do a matrix, we're still going to use brackets. And we're going to have to type the data in rows separated by a semicolon. And that's going to signify the end of that row in the beginning of the next row. And as you can see, I have the data typed in now. You can see that I have the row separated by a semicolon. This would be the second row right here, separated by a semicolon, and that would be the third row for that matrix. And then we have the bracket at the end. Um, it's actually not necessary to do spaces in between the commas, but I like the spaces because it makes it a little bit more readable for me when I'm doing coding. And we'll go ahead and run this. And you can see it says tip type is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now one thing to be aware of, uh, since we're doing statistics with this, each column is generally representative of a specific variable. So you have to remember when you enter in the data, you're actually going across three variables right here. And then you're doing the next row with those three variables and then the next row with those three variables. So it's a little bit different for typing in the data. So you just have to pay attention to what you're doing 
uh, with your data and how you're entering that if you're typing it in as a matrix format. Probably a better way to do this is to uh, import a table. And to import a table, I'm going to give it a, a name. So I'm going to use data that's uh, called wire bond data, and I'm just going to call it WBD for wire bond data for short. And I'm going to say that this is equal to read table. And you can see that uh, MATLAB does autocomplete when you're calling functions. When you type in the first part of the function, it'll guess what you're trying to do. And you can hit tab, just make sure it's the right function that you want to use. So we'll encase this in parentheses, and then when we call a file name, we have to use either an apostrophe or quotations. I like to use the apostrophe because then I don't have to um, hit the shift button. It just saves a little bit of time. Now, once you uh, call the table, put the apostrophes in, it's gonna say, it's gonna look over in your working directory and show you all the files that are available. You can, you can start typing the file name if you want, or you can scroll through the list, and we're gonna use the wire bond data, 1-1.csv. We'll just select that, and you'll see that the, the data file comes in in purple along with the apostrophes right there, and that's what that's reading in. And when you hit run, you'll be able to see the table. The reason I'm getting this warning right here is because in the CSV file, pull strength was two words separated by a space. That's not a legal character in MATLAB, so it eliminates that space in between there and compresses the name of that variable. So now I have a table in here and I have each um, column represents a variable. Obviously this first column is the observation and we can actually scroll through the table and see what data that we have in here. Now I'm gonna show you a couple operations using a table just so we know how to do this. So let's start off with calculating the mean. So we'll call this WBD uh, mean. And we're gonna say that this is equal to the mean function. We have to tell it what data we're calling, which is WBD. And so that's saying, okay, we're gonna pull this uh, table that you called WBD up here. And then we have to tell it what column we wanna do the mean for. So I'm gonna use the dot and then I'm gonna I'm gonna choose one of the variable names in here. So I'm gonna use pull strength. And you can see again, it does auto complete once we do that. And then you can go ahead and you can run that, that function and it'll spit out the mean. And we'll do the standard deviation as well. So we'll call this WBD SD for standard deviation. And we're gonna, and the standard deviation function is STD. All right, so we're gonna do this for the pull strength and then we'll go ahead and run this line of code. And then there is the standard deviation for the pull strength of that wire bond data. Now you can also use MATLAB as a calculator. So for example, maybe you wanna calculate the coefficient of variation. And I'm just gonna call this WBD for CV for coefficient of variation. And we're gonna call the names, and this is why I name the mean and name the standard deviation so I could create a new function with those. And so we'll say the wire bond data um, standard deviation divided by the wire bond data mean. And so that would give us the um, coefficient of variation expressed as a decimal. I'm gonna express this as a percentage, so I'm going to multiply it by 100. And then I'll go ahead and run this code right here. And you can see now we're using this as a calculator and we're assigning that value. So if you have to create a value that's gonna be used later on, it's a good idea. Uh, to do it this way and assign it a name so that way you can call it easier later on and then you create a new function with that. So that would be the coefficient of variation of 54.9391. The last thing I wanna show you is sometimes when we have data in the form of a table, uh, we can't use it for certain functions and we have to convert it to a matrix and I'm gonna show you a really easy way to take this table and convert it to a matrix. So I'm gonna title this wire bond data matrix. So it'll be WBD matrix. And we're gonna say what table we're using. We call this WBD. And then I'm gonna use the parentheses after this. And I'm gonna use, actually, I'm sorry, not the parentheses. We wanna use the uh, curly brackets. And then we're gonna say colon, comma, and colon. And basically what that's going to do is it's gonna take and strip away the, the row numbers that are over here on the side of the table, along with the variable names that are across the top, and it's gonna to leave me with only the values that are inside the table when I run this command. 
and you can see once I do that it says it's a 25 by 4 matrix and now what this does is it allows us to run functions like for example if we're doing one-way ANOVA we could run the ANOVA 1 function over these um, over this data set right here over those five columns right there and there's some other things that I'll show you later on in future videos that relate to ANOVA and some of the other stuff so hopefully this gets you started in in MATLAB uh, once you're all done with this you may want to save your file and there's two things that you could do one you could save it as an MLX file and you just click on the floppy disk icon to do that It'll automatically uh, give it a, a file name. You should do that, and it's saving it as an MLX file. An MLX file allows you to open this back up later on and then just add to the code or change things in the code. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel because I don't want to save it. The other thing that we can do is we can go to the down arrow and choose Save As if you've already saved it as an MLX file. And one of the other options it allows you to do is save it as a PDF. So if you're doing this as an assignment and you're submitting the assignment, you're going to want to save this as a PDF. Uh, that way you can submit it on whatever learning management system you're using. In our class, we're using Blackboard, so you can upload a PDF uh, pretty easily, easily to Blackboard. Again, I'm going to hit Cancel. Um, so those were the main things that I want to show you. Hopefully this helps you get started with MATLAB. And uh, look for future videos from me regarding statistics in MATLAB.